Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Sometimes when you make a video, you know you're just digging a big massive hole for yourself. And if something goes wrong, it can be a bit catastrophic sometimes. So if you were to do dump all that into the tank at once, then obviously that's night night fish. Catastrophic sometimes, catastrophic sometimes, catastrophic sometimes. So you join me in a bit of an emergency. Um, obviously these fish are not doing well. I'm having to kind of guard the overflow so as the fish don't get sucked against it because they're extremely weak at the moment. Um, some of them are starting to pull back now but some of them are not looking very good at all. So you remember in my last video when I said you need to be careful with CO2 you don't want to put too much in because it can really affect the fish. This is what happens when you're not careful and you put too much in. And one thing I will say is that drop checker over there is a piece of shit. And then it's still saying it's perfectly, perfectly good in here. Perfectly healthy amounts of CO2 in the water, but it's clearly not the case. So about 20 minutes, half an hour ago, I was working in the office. My wife shouted through that something didn't look right. And every single fish in this tank was pretty much lying on the floor, on the, on the sand. Um, so I knew straight away what the problem was. I was getting too much CO2 in there. It's only been running for a couple of days since my last video that I showed you. I thought I had it dialed in, but obviously not. And to be fair, previously they, they have been absolutely fine. Um, and I must have checked on them maybe an hour before. So there's nothing wrong with the canister, there's nothing wrong with the regulator. Um, I did turn that up a little bit this afternoon because the drop checker was showing I didn't have enough. So I think that is what has done for us here. So I may well lose every single fish here. Um, so emergency procedure, the first thought I had was I have a choice. I can either get all these fish out of this tank and into one of my other tanks. I just don't have any other tanks that are warm at the moment. All my other tanks in the fish room are a lot cooler than this and I just worry that the shock of moving them uh, would just finish them off because they're all so weak. So I opted for emergency water change. As you may well be able to hear, I'm still doing that now. I'm adding and removing water as much as I can. I want to keep the sump going so I can't just take a massive amount out. So I want to keep the sump going because that gets a lot of oxygen into the waters through the overflow and the baffles and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've added a couple of air stones over here. I've got the air stone in that corner that normally kicks on when the CO2 goes off. Uh, and as you can see these poor fish. I don't know if you can see, I'm having to guard this overflow here with my hand just to stop the fish getting sucked against it when they're so weak. Um, but at least some of them are making an attempt to swim now. Whereas before they were all either just floating at the surface, twirling violently, or doing what this guy down here is doing and just lying on the ground. Um, he's still breathing, his gills are still going. Like I say, we seem to have caught this fairly quickly. But my god, it makes a big impact. So like I say, I've got as much air as I can get running. I've got the sump still circulating all the water. Obviously the CO2 went off straight away. Uh, and I've been adding water as fast as I can add water and then taking it out as the sump looks like it's getting full. Um, so I think we've been at it about half an hour so far. All the tetras at least are back up. Um, the cardinal tetras, they were all down and out. Uh, the discus are starting to make a bit of a comeback but yeah it's just a case of stand here guard this overflow. Um, I don't know if you can see what's going on there but I'm basically just keeping my hand in front of it so the fish don't get sucked against it as they're struggling to swim away from it. Um, so see how long this has to be kept up for before either everything's dead or everything's back to normal or normalish. Feeling like a complete idiot at the moment, obviously. But I'll check back in in a second. 
So another 10 minutes later, we've got one fish down there, not looking very happy. Um, the rest of the guys are crowded over in this corner, which is a slight improvement because they were crowded on the overflow, which is over there. But look at this. I can focus on it. This is now changed to the colour to say that everything is good. Before that it was saying there wasn't enough CO2 in the water. Which is a good hour after the problem was noticed. I.e. all the fish gasping or floating on the bottom of the aquarium. So I'm not very happy with that CO2 drop checker or the fluid in there. Um, but I can't blame that. I obviously rushed things a bit too much. We had... I should have monitored it a bit longer after upping the amount I was putting in. I mean, I did sit here for a good hour I was in this room. After I changed it, keeping an eye on things, it was all fine. And then it was another, maybe another hour after that, that my wife noticed everything looked like it was dead. Um, but yeah, they're not healthy by any means, but there's no twirling, no whirling, no crashing about the tank going on, which is what these guys were doing when they first started coming back round. Um, so I've got air on and running. I'll leave that on all night if I have to. Well, I would do that anyway. It's just extra. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to do, so I wasn't sure what the best idea was. My main concern was all my other tanks. Um, they all run a bit cooler than this one, so, well, I could have scooped all the fish out and got them into another tank. They were so weak, I didn't know if they would survive it, but also the the amount of carbon dioxide that was obviously in the water, um, there would have been a drastic difference in pH, and it's pH that can really kill a fish very quickly. Um, as you will see, these are not happy fish. Um, so if I took them out of this and dumped them into another one, that would have been an additional shock, so the pH, the temperature... I don't know, that, that might not have been the right idea. Um, maybe I should have done that. Maybe they wouldn't have been so much of a shock as they would have gone straight back into water they were expecting. And there's another one pinned against the overflows. I need to get this guy off. But all of them still a bit gaspy and very much not looking healthy, but at least they're all up and about. Okay, we're back. We've done as many water changes as we can do. Um, well, that's not true, but I've done a ton of water changes. We've got all the extra bubblers in there, getting as much gas exchange going as possible. All the fish are no longer gasping. They're no longer looking dead on the floor. Um, we've lost one cardinal tetra, unfortunately. But all the discus, well I wouldn't say they look fine, they look better. They're alive at least. Um, they've gone into hiding now that I've come back in here, but I was watching from afar and they were at least swimming about looking semi-normal. Um, so I guess we might have just caught it in time. I'm sure it's not healthy for them, but they look better now. Uh, but one thing to notice is this bloody thing. That's it now, after maybe... What time are we at now? So, two hours after we noticed the fish tanking, it's literally... I checked this, what, five minutes ago, and it's literally just changed to this colour here, which is the one that's saying you've got a bit too much CO2. So, I don't know whether it's an old test solution or it's just terrible and it takes that long and um, but yeah not very impressed with this so I might have to do a little bit more testing with some other um, drop checkers and different solutions and see if I can get something that works a bit better but yeah disaster averted right so I'm going to leave them like this just now um, I might just leave the lights on actually because I don't really want Plants, when the lights are on, 
are consuming CO2 and the lights are off, they're releasing CO2. So I don't really want any more CO2 in here at the moment. So I might leave the lights on for another hour or so. Um, and then we'll come back and have a look in the morning and see how to get on. Okay, so we're at the next day. I checked them this morning when the lights were off and they seemed to be a lot happier. Um, and as you can see, they're all now swimming around normally again. So it's not that it just doesn't matter now and they're all fine. I'm sure it's not good for them. Um, same as you and I getting poisoned. It's not a nice experience. So definitely not something I want to repeat again. Um, so I think we're back under control. I'm still going to persevere with the CO2. I'm just going to be a lot more cautious now. Um, I know yesterday when I was talking about this um, CO2 liquid in the detector there, thinking about it, this is probably a good couple of years old, if not even longer, so I'm not sure if maybe this stuff goes out of date or it's just not quite as fast reacting as I remember. Um, but certainly when I used to use this, when I first started trying out CO2, it was changing a lot faster. Um, but yes, I think I was probably just panicking and going, ah! So I don't think that was necessarily the problem. I'll get a newer bottle and look into some other tests there. Yeah, I've got a pH pen and things like that, so I can do it a little more scientifically. Um, but yeah, thankfully, I think we are limited to the one cardinal tetra that we've lost, so it's never good to lose any fish, but that could have been a whole lot worse. That is easily the... That could easily have been the entire tank wiped out in one foul swoop. So we've avoided that, and that's a good thing. But I wanted to thank everyone who's made comments. What I've done is, as well as ordering some new um, drop checker liquid, I've ordered brand new test kits for everything, including phosphates and KH and GH and things like that, just to... I do have all these things, but they're probably quite old as well. And then I can get a better read on uh, what's going on in there because uh, a couple of people have suggested checking the phosphate levels which is a really good idea, it's not something I had done um, to combat the algae which was the whole reason I was doing this in the first place. But to be clear, this project to add CO2 was not to get rid of algae, it was to build the whole base of what I'm trying to do with the planted tank uh, and keep things as healthy as possible and algae, uh, CO2 is just a little part of that. It's more than likely some kind of uh, nutrient imbalance, whether I'm feeding too much or not water changing enough or something like that that's causing this. But yeah, I'm going to start being consistent and making sure I stick to the schedule and then at least then I can build on it to work out where the problems lie after that. So that will be what's coming. So make sure you've clicked that subscribe button to see lots of future videos of me testing water and other exciting things like that. Um, but yeah, just wanted to make a quick video here to update everyone. Everyone seems to be back on track now, um, and hopefully we're all good. Thanks for watching, click that bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Oh, and if you were wondering, the blanket thing didn't work. <laughs>